In this video, I want to show you how to properly install flashing around your chimney on a shingle roof. Let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly install flashing around your chimney. Chimneys tend to be one of those places that leak a lot. We're the roof repair specialist and we repair a lot of chimneys. So if done properly, chimneys flashing should last for years. Pretty much as long as your roof lasts, the flashing should last just as long. You should not be relying on asphalt mastic sealants to keep your roof waterproof. You should be relying on proper flashing. I'm going to show you the steps how to do that. Now in this demo, we've got a mock chimney built. We don't have the chimney wall up, but it's the same concept. Just imagine this wall going straight up. The flashing is going to be the same. We're just working here because it's easier to show you and video the process. Let's get into it. Now we've already got our shingle installed all the way up to this wall right here. We install our shingles all the way up and whether it's perfectly flush or we've got two inches that needs to be covered, our metal here will cover this up. So we call this a 110 metal. It's been prefabricated to 110 degrees from the factory. This side is four inches and it steps up two inches. So this is gonna be installed right here. Now we've got a little bit of fabrication to do at these corners because really the corners are what matters and that's what we have to pay special attention to. So we wanna push this snug up and um, Marco's gonna demonstrate on how to properly cut it and we're gonna make our markings. So he's actually using his tin snips right now uh, to make a line at a 45 degree angle. Now you can see here, this flange will get bent down and this flange will slide over to the side. And this is a basic theory of it. Another thing we like to do as always is round these corners off and bend these in and we want to do that on both sides. Now for this demonstration we've got a piece of flashing that's prefabricated. This is the same 110 metal, 4 inches and 2 inches, that's pre-cut. You can see here, the corners are rounded. All that's left to do is to bend this flashing nice and tight to this corner. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So that's pretty much it. This is our 110 metal installed. The next thing is going to be to install step flashing here on this side. All right, now that we have our head wall flashing installed, the next thing to do is to install our uh, step flashing going up the side. Step flashing is essentially a piece of flashing bent to a 90 degree angle. And we actually install one piece of step flashing, then install a shingle. And this steps up like so. What we use to make step flashing is actually what we call tin shingles. These are just essentially eight inch by 12 inch square pieces of metal. They come pre-painted as well as just galvanized. Now generally we like to go with a pre-painted step flashing just to match the roof as close as possible. So you can see we've got like a darker gray charcoal color roof we're installing. So we're installing a dark gray roof. These are pretty easy to bend by hand and don't need to be a perfect bend because this is gonna be all covered up. So we'll mark this here. And that's all you need to do. And now you're ready to start installing. Now the first piece of tin shingle we want to fabricate slightly to improve our flow of water. What you want to do is bring it down to this point right here, past the shingles uh, nailing tab. Then what we want to do is make a mark like this. I actually you want to cut this down and I'll show you the purpose of this shortly here. And as always, we want to always want to round off these corners here, just for aesthetics and safety purposes. Just round it off slightly. Now the purpose of this is when we install it, it's actually going to help the water flow down, as we don't want water to get into this corner here, because um, this is our vulnerable corner right here. So when we install this first piece, we're going to install some adhesive back here, some caulking, install this, and any water flowing down here is going to catch this lip and flow down onto our shingle roof. So this corner is re we really want to protect with some adhesive caulking. You can see what's going to happen now as we press this down. This joint is fully sealed. So any water that tries to get in here is not going to be able to. And I'm going to lift this up. Generally we wouldn't lift it up. You can see that that corner is fully sealed now. So 
We've got our first shingle, tin shingle. Now we can install our first shingle up to it. We want to make sure that it's lined here. And we want to leave a slab, slight gap between the shingle and the step flashing to allow for drainage in this area right here. Now the only difference is similar to what we did around our pipe flashings. If you haven't seen that video, you can refer to that. Around any penetration, we don't want to nail right here. Uh, and you'll see why shortly. When we install our next uh, tin shingle step flashing, we want to make sure that this corner right here is not vulnerable. So when we install this, this is going to allow the water to flow on top of here and will also hold this shingle down. So that's it. Um, essentially with each layer of shingle, we install uh, a new piece of step flashing. We've installed our step flashing and shingles all the way up, and now we're at the back wall. Um, we want to cut this and bend it over. Similar to the bottom, we want to make sure we have a good joint and good flashing between here and uh, this back wall right here. So, just make a slight notch here. And fold it over. So you can see here's what we came up with. Now, this is going to be the first piece. We're going to install one more to make sure we have a greater overlap. So we've already installed this. As I mentioned, there's a small overlap here, just an inch. We want to install one more piece to provide more protection, especially in this corner right here. So what we're going to do is, since we already have this, we're going to overlap this about two inches. I'm going to mark my corner right here. And what I'm going to do is, starting here, so all I did was make a 45 degree cut from right here to this corner. Now what that allows me to do is bend this top here, and bend the bottom here. When I install adhesive at this corner, then install my saddle on top, it's going to provide for great protection in this area right here. So that's our last piece of step flashing. What we're gonna do is install one more shingle right here. Then we'll show you how to install the saddle right here. So we've finished the step flashing on this side. You can see we've got our shingles, we've got our step flashing. We still need to install a piece of counter flashing on top of this. Now one thing I want to show you in the meanwhile is how water acts when we're pouring it down here. So during a rain, what's going to happen is as water comes along here, it's going to constantly come off, roll off each one. So it has no chance of getting underneath each shingle. And that's exactly what we want to see. And you can also see here that this lip helps water not get come here. My finger's here and completely dry. So that's the reason we install step flashing here as opposed to a long piece of L metal is to allow the water to constantly come off here and step onto the shingle below it. So we've installed our step flashing on each side. We've installed our 110 metal roof to wall connection on this side. Now we're gonna go to the top side and install our saddle flashing here. I'll show you how to fabricate it, install it, and how to cock the corners to make sure we're properly waterproofed. So we've pre-cut our saddle flashing. We want it to stick out four inches from each side, from each end of the wall. Uh, and what we're gonna do is mark this back right here. So what we did here is just drew a mark. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to cut and fabricate based off this end right here. Well, anytime when you're working with sheet metal, make sure to wear gloves. For this demonstration, I'm not, but these can be razor sharp corners, so be careful.
As always, we want to round off these corners right here, both for aesthetics and for safety. So you can see we've already cut this down to size. These corners here are flush. We've got this wrapped around. What these channels are gonna allow us to do is it'll help divert the water around it. So the majority of the water is actually gonna go around and stay away from this corner. We wanna protect this corner as much as possible. So prior to installing this, we're gonna apply a nice heavy bead of adhesive caulking. And we actually wanna come up this wall here. So you can see here what this adhesive has done is fully sealed this corner. So as we're pressing it in, that's coming out the sides. If you want, you can give it a quick wipe. And that's gonna make sure that no water ever gets in there. So you can see what Marcos did was not install any nails here. We want to make sure this area is free of nails because as the water comes down, it's going to be diverted. We don't want any nails to have uh, nail holes to allow the water to get through. All right, now that we've installed the saddle flashing, we're install, ready to install the rest of the flashings. Uh, as I've mentioned in our video before on how to properly install uh, shingles, it's going to be the same nailing pattern um, just right on top here. We're going to align it with this shingle here. So we've installed our shingles and we're all set to go. You can see our saddle is four inches up and actually goes 14, 14 inches high. So what that means is underneath here, we've got full solid flashing that has no nail holes. So we're not worried about this joint. Literally, we can have this open. It still wouldn't leak because we've got solid flashing here. Now, keep in mind, if your penetrations are wider than 30 inches, you're gonna wanna put a cricket. And we'll discuss that in a different video on how to install a cricket. But if in our case, we're under 30 inches, so we're not installing a cricket. Um, another thing I want to note is the gap between the saddle and the shingles. Whenever possible, you want to leave a little bit of a channel here to allow water to flow. If we had our shingles butted up all the way, it would prohibit the proper water flow. So now, in this case, we've got three to four inches exposed. It's going to allow our water to go around and properly drain. Guys, thanks for watching. We've got a lot of other videos on shingle roof installation. If we're missing something, let us know. We'd love to show you how to properly do the things that you want to do. Like, subscribe, and again, if you have any questions, let us know below.